जय जय महामाई की जय जय स्वामी जी महाराज जी की जय जय स्वामी ब्रह्मानंद महाराज जी की जय जय भगवान बुद्ध देव की जय जय भगवान जीशु कृष्ण की जय जय गंगा माई की जय Amen. Mm-hmm.
Swami Balabhadra Nandaji Maharaj, Assistant uh, General Secretary of the Ramakrishna Math and the Ramakrishna Masan Mission, visiting from our headquarters in Belur Math. Swami Balabhadra Nandaji, those who have seen him or have at least listened to his talks on YouTube or online, know his excellent power of oratory and beauty of his speech. Swami Balabhadranandaji joined the Ramakrishna order in 1976 at the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Gold Park, Kolkata. He, was in, he is initiated by Swami Nirvanandaji Maharaj, a disciple of Swami Brahmananda, who blessed him, blessed Nirvanandaji, that you will realize Nirvana, you will realize God. You will have Brahma Jnana. Swami Balabhadranandaji had his sannyasa in 1986 from Swami Gambhiranandaji Maharaj. He was in Gold Park Ram Krishna Mission for nearly three decades from 1976 until 2005 and looked after mainly its publication and its youth affairs. In 2005, he was called to head the Ramakrishna Mission Asanso, a famous school in West Bengal, as its secretary or head of the center. He was in Asanso for about seven years until 2012, when he was elected in the governing body of the Ramakrishna order and made a trustee of the Ramakrishna Math. And that very year he was appointed as one of the assistant general secretaries and moved to Belur Math. And since then he is in Belur Math as one of the very high ranking in the administration of our order. Before we listen to the Swamiji's talk on Sri Ramakrishna and his disciples, Sri Ramakrishna and his gospel, 
I would like to invite Swami Ishatmananda Ji Maharaj, head of the Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago. He will have something to give us, something to teach us. We can do something together with Swami Ishatmananda Ji. Thank you and welcome you once, welcome you all once more. Good evening, friends. Uh, we are going to listen about Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna today and his unis, unique teaching. Sri Ramakrishna used to love to sing and to listen songs. So I think we should first begin with a song and then the Swami will come and give his deliberation. So you are having the paper, right? All no. in English and in Hindi and Bengali, three languages are there. So please join me. Repeat after me. It is very wonderful song and very easy song. Aji premanande monre gaho Ram Krishna naam. Aji. Aji premanande munre gaho Ram Krishna naam Aji premanande munre gaho Ram Krishna naam Gaho Japu Ram Krishna Naam Japu Naam Shudha Pane Rao Mat Abhiram Ram Shudha Aji premanande monre gaho Ram Krishna naam Aji premanande monre gaho Ram Krishna naam holo Punna brajodham Kamaro Shakagano Lue Kale Lila Biram Janamana Shamukure Bhashi Janamana Shamukure Bhashi Chesha Bishutam Janamana Shamukure Bhashi Ram Krishna Naam Ram Krishna Naam Aji Premanande Munre Gaho Ram Krishna Naam Aji Namo Namo Chandra Devi Namo Khudiram Namo Namo 
कृपाई मा जननी लहो गो प्रणाम कृपाई जय राम बटीर माटी चंदन समान जय राम अमार मा जन नीर जन्मभूमि महातीर्थ स्थान अमार मा जन नीर मायर चरण शरण नीले मायर चरण शरण नीले पूरे मनुष काम मायर चर राम कृष्ण नाम राम कृष्ण नाम आजी प्रेमानंदे मन रे गाओ राम कृष्ण नाम आजी प्रेमानंदे राम कृष्ण नाम May I now request Shami Balavadra Nandaji to please come here. Good evening. I offer my pronouns to Sri Ramakrishna, Sharada Devi, Shami Vivekananda, Bhagavan Buddha Dev, Bhagavan Jesus, and Raja Maharaji. My loving regards to Shami Kripa Mayanandaji, the head of our Vedanta Society at Toronto, and Shami Ishatmanandaji, the head of this center. My regards and best wishes to all of you present here. The topic of this evening's discussion is Sri Ramakrishna and this unique gospel. There is a wonderful book written by Shami Ghananandaji entitled Sri Ramakrishna and his unique message. Its preface has been written by the famous British historian Arnold Toynbee. He writes in that preface that Hinduism is unique among the major historical religions of the world in that of all the religions only Hinduism says that neither Hinduism nor any other religion is the only representation of God or supreme spiritual truth and that Every religion is a path leading to the same truth. After that he says, now to know this theoretically is surely good, but that is not enough. Because religion is a matter, uh, religion is something uh, which is not a matter of study alone. It is something which has to be lived and experienced. 
and it is in this regard that Sri Ramakrishna has expressed his uniqueness. That is, he has experienced, he has gone to, gone through various paths within Hinduism and in some of the major non-Hindu religions also and arrived at this truth, as we know, that as many faiths, so many paths. <coughs> when we study, when we start studying Sri Ramakrishna and the allied personalities, allied spiritual personalities who lived with him to play active role in his divine sports or divine mission, we are most uh, uh, amazed, we become mostly amazed more than any other characters by Sri Sharada Devi and Shami Vivekananda. They are our holy trio. Of this holy trio, we hold Sharada Devi, only Sharada Devi, at par with Sri Ramakrishna in spiritual stature. Naturally, we attach very much importance to what Sharada Devi said about Sri Ramakrishna. With respect to what we just quoted from Arnold Tynbee, let us pay attention to uh, two sayings of Holy Mother. Holy Mother passed away in 1920 and Arnold Tynbee, uh, I mean, make this, made this remark much later, about probably in 1960s. Holy Mother says in Bengali, Thakur chile nekti dekhalo. This tallies with what we just quoted from Arnold Tynbee. Thakur chile nekti dekhalo, meaning that the master was a person who had seen and experienced at first hand whatever he had spoken about spiritual matters. These words perfectly tallies with what uh, when we said about Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna always stood on the strength of his first and spiritual experiences. He did not say anything, quoting from uh, other seers' uh, uh, experiences or from scriptures. He's, he did say, but he said that only when their experiences matched with his own experiences. Nivedita, he, she has written a beautiful introduction to the conflict of, of Shami Vivekananda. There she, about Sri Ramakrishna's first hand experience of the spiritual truths, beautifully uh, writes, beautifully explains that Narendra, Shami Vivekananda, then Narendra Nath, uh, he was made of three factors. One is our eternal scriptures, the next is Sri Ramakrishna, and the third one is India, his motherland. So, Nivedita writes that our eternal scriptural truths, Shami Vivekananda knew of studying those scriptures, but his heart longed for a recent verification of those ancient scriptures of the truths contained in those in ancient scriptures. That verification he found in Sri Ramakrishna. In Sri Ramakrishna, he found the key to life. And Nivedita writes that Narendra Nath found that here is a person whose mind is always swing swinging from the many to the one. Here is a person whose constant source of knowledge is Samadhi. What she wanted to mean that Narendra found that whatever he is saying, he is saying on the basis of what he is experiencing continuously in the depth of Samadhi. So, uh, this confirms to the fact that uh, Sri Ramakrishna, that is the uh, strength of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna always stood on his first hand knowledge of the spiritual truths. But regarding preaching of, so this part, as we have already mentioned, this part, uh, in this regard, uh, Toynbee's view, 
and Holy Mother's view is uh, the same, both are same. But regarding preaching of equal validity of all religions and religious ceremony, Holy Mother does not agree that the master did this with a conscious planning. Yes, equal validity of all spiritual faiths and paths is a message of tremendous importance that has come out of his spiritual personality for the good of all, for the sake of this, uh, I mean, for this. Uh, sake of this need of the uh, present age, but he did not do that consciously. Mother said, he did not know anything other than God. That is why he could not remain at peace even after attaining the supreme realization of Kali worship. Mother Kali appeared before him in formless consciousness first and after that in the living, as a living uh, image, living present in the form of Kali also. Sri Ramakrishna himself also would often say that you are engaged, you are busy with so many things, uh, addressing uh, the householder devotees and other devotees who would come to him, that you are busy with so many things of the world. I have kept myself busy only with one thing that is with God. He did not learn anything other than this. That is why, that is why even after, after attaining the supreme reality of Kali worship, he could not remain at peace. That is why he moved from one spiritual path to another, trying every path and realizing God, following every path and realizing that the same God he had reached following various paths. At Dakshineshwar, various sadhus, sadhus of various sects and denominations, would sadhus and uh, spiritual aspirants of various faiths and sects would come to him. And he went to pilgrimage also, there also he came across many a sadhu. Everywhere he could find religious intolerance. Even very advanced souls or those who already attained some realization would not see eye to eye with other sects. Swami Saradanandaji, uh, in his famous biography on Sri Ramakrishna, Bengali, in Bengali it is known as Ramakrishna Lila Prasanga. It has been translated by Jagodanandu long back and very recently by Swami Chetanandaji, Jagodanandaji and Chetanandaji. So there Swami Saradanandaji says, he would be surprised, Sri Ramakrishna would be surprised to note that so much conflicts, so much intolerance is outside among the uh, spiritual aspirants and sadhus and, and total absence of such intolerance within himself. He could not reconcile between the two. He sometimes felt as if who was correct, whether they or himself. It is because that also Saradanandaji explains in the book. And this is a wonderful book. This is not only interpretation of Sri Ramakrishna only. It interprets all the divine ins incarnations, uh, lives of all the divine incarnations, how they uh, remaining in this world, they perform their divine missions. So they do not understand, they do not realize themselves as divine incarnations from the very beginning. As if they, uh, uh, in this computer age, we can understand uh, uh, it better as if some sort of a programming they themselves uh, do on themselves so so that they temporarily forget that they are the god they are the shadha vastu sadhana and shadho and sadhoko we are sadhoko we are spiritual aspirants an object of i mean our goal is god god is shadha vastu whom we attain by sadhana is shadha vastu so so this Avataras, the divine incarnations, they do not understand from the beginning that they are the Shadha Vastu. They do not need any Shadhana actually. When Shami Vive, when Sri Ramakrishna passed away, spontaneously Holy Mother cried out, Mother Kali, where have you gone, leaving me behind? So Sri Ramakrishna herself, Sri Ramakrishna himself was Mother Kali, but we have seen that Sri Ramakrishna is rubbing his face on the uh, on ground, 
yearning for Mother Kali. So, they forget. Because they forget, regarding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is being said in the Vaishnava scriptures, uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Hori Hoyo Bolche Hori. Himself is Hori. He himself is Hori. Still he is weeping. Still, still is crying, uh, uttering Hori's name. Because they forget about uh, their uh, divine, I mean, divine stature. Because they forget that they are the God incarnate. Uh, that is why their sadhana, this is not acting. That is why the sadhana they do for realizing God become genuine. And because the sadhanas become genuine, uh, we have, they do that uh, to uh, open new avenues of sadhanas for the people of this world. So, Swami Saradhananji says that Sri Ramakrishna also would not understand this. That why is so much intolerance in the uh, spiritual, among the spiritual seekers and why uh, he uh, perfectly uh, feel it unnecessary that it is not required, uh, it is uh, totally useless. Later he realized, later he realized after he had done the Shoroshi Puja. That is a very important thing in Sri Ramakrishna's life, in, in this avatar or Leela, the Shoroshi Puja. The Divine Mother was there. Sri Ramakrishna says that whenever avatar incarnates, whenever God incarnates, he has to come under the sway of the Divine Mother. With the, with the power of the Divine Mother only, God incarnate can live and do his Divine will. Shuddha Brahma, pure Brahma is above Adda Shakti, Divine Mother. But when anybody, we common people, we assume, uh, we assume, whenever we assume our body, we come in this world as human beings, we are all under uh, Divine Mother, even the Avataro himself is under the Divine Mother. So, with the, the help of Divine Mother, so, so we find that whenever Avatar incarnates, along with him, the Divine Mother also incarnates. That is, actually this is the play of two Avataras. Sri Ramakrishna is the Divine Incarnation of Bhagavan and Sharada Devi uh, is Divine Mother incarnate. And in this age, we are fortunate that both Bhagavan and Bhagavati, both the avatars of Bhagavan as well as uh, uh, Bhagavati were active for the good of us. Anyway, so after the Shoroshi Puja, when he worship uh, Sri Ramakriya, Divine Mother as Goddess Shoroshi, after that, he realized that he is not a common sadhaka. He is actually God himself and he has some definite mission. One of the missions he realized as this. This is the mission that this, this uh, acceptance of all paths, this equal validity of all religions which he said that as many faiths, so many paths. This is the new thing. This is the new thing he has to offer uh, in this age. This was there. In our scriptures also, that you come south, vipra, bahuda, padanti, etc., we know, but never it was stressed upon. So, this is the unique, one of the unique messages. This is one thing he has to offer in this stage. But Avataro, Avataro comes not only for the few years he lives here on earth in mortal form, he comes for the entire age that starts with his advent. He surely could foresee, Sri Ramakrishna could surely foresee that the present global, glo in this present global, this present glo globalized world he, he could foresee. The whole world has now shrunk to our homes. Now we cannot but be influenced by others. Probably the reverse is also true, that we also cannot live without influencing others. So various religions cannot remain in isolation from each other or at loggerheads with each other they must shake hands with each other. So, the discovery of the truth that all religious faiths lead to the same goal was necessary and needed to stay in the world to be practiced. Sri Ramakrishna did exactly this. He discovered this truth and repeatedly, pra repeatedly stressed its practice in his gospel. So, it was surely one of his important gospels uh, that, uh, surely this was one of his important gospels that 
as many faiths, so many paths. All faiths are valid paths to the same spiritual goal, so long as certain pre prerequisite like purity, mentality, morality, empathy are not compromised. This should be stressed. All paths are valid uh, does not mean any path is valid. Uh, some 20 or 25 years back, there was a faith, uh, a cult of death. That news uh, came in both news, music and time. Issues of the same week, immediately before which this gruesome incident took place. A spiritual leader used to preach cult of death. So one day, he called some 1,000 devotees, disciples of his, and he was seated, and he made all the disciples, along with the family, to take poison and die. And he's sitting there. It came in news, and music and time. In the same issue of music and time, it came. So he, sit, he sat there watching, and all the disciples with family, even with children, they are drinking poison was supplied by him. So they all took that poison, they died, and all have, when he became sure that all have died, he also took poison and died. So you cannot see, you cannot say that this is also a valid path to the same goal. So all paths are valid path, all religious path, are all genuine spiritual paths are valid part to the goal. So how will you understand the certain basic uh, requisites should be there uh, all through uh, the journey of the uh, journey through that particular spiritual path, purity, morality, empathy, all these things will be there. And when uh, a spiritual sadhaka has uh, uh, realized his goal following a particular path, those qualities will be more in him, more in him or her as spontaneously. Uh, that is the spiritual journey. We know these qualities are good. We try to, uh, I mean, earn it more and more. We try to acquire it more and more. But at a stage, when I re reach the goal, those qualities become uh, uh, spontaneous, spontaneous part of our character. But there is a <coughs> There is a message. This is also not the basic message, basic gospel, like we cannot say. Even basic to this, a very important message uh, was this, that uh, which Sri Ramakrishna gave. Uh, that is the main mission of Sri Ramakrishna's life. Once Swami Vivekananda was asked, Nibhidit asked him, what is, the, what is your life's mission? Swami Vivekananda said that, my life's mission is to preach unto mankind their divinity and to show them how to manifest that divinity at every walk of life. Now, what was Sri Ramakrishna's mission? That was the mission of Vivekananda also. This is the mission of Sri Ramakrishna also. Sri Ramakrishna uh, gave us a spiritual identity, a divine identity to all, a divine identity to all, a divine purpose of life and a divine basis of life and a divine goal of life, he said. He says, be all illumined, you all be illumined. Manhush, uh, in Bengali, uh, the man uh, is called man Manush. He will, he will break that word Manush into Man and Hush. Man means dignity or respect. Hush means awareness. Be all aware of your real dignity, real identity. Everybody has some awareness of his identity or dignity, but real dignity will be some uh, that will some way related to God, divine identity. Either I am God or I belong to God. That is the real identity. Either I am divinity itself or I am related to the divinity itself. So this is the following the path of knowledge. I am the divine. I am potentially divine. I am the divinity in totality. And in the path of bhakti, I am part of the divinity. 
I am, I belong to the divinity which is God, which is my beloved God. So, this divine identity, Sri Ramakrishna, that is the basic message, that is the basic message, unique gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And as, divini as this divinity can be achieved through innumerable valid paths, that is why he said this, as many faiths, so many paths. So, that also comes afterwards. So, how to, how to attain the divinity? Sri Ramakrishna gave us certain uh, for this age. The most, for most of the people, the ultimate goal, which is called uh, God realization, that can be achieved by following the path of bhakti, following the path of devotion. And for some, the following the path of uh, knowledge, very few, very few. Holy Mother said that Sri Ramakrishna was Advaitin. Actually, he was so. We have some wrong impressions about certain things. That we feel that Shami Vivekananda, he preached Advaita Vedanta, Vedanta as a whole. Vedanta does not mean only Advaita Vedanta, even Bhakti is Vedanta, even Kali Puja is Vedanta. Shami Turiyananda ji in Shanti Ashram, Shami Vivekananda told him, that you preach only Vedanta. Yes, he preached only Vedanta. But by Vedanta, he did not preach only Advaita Vedanta. In Shantyasana, Hori Maharaj Swami Turyanandaji often talk of the Divine Mother, often talk of the Divine His disciples will, he will ask the disciples to depend on Holy Mother. Sometimes the disciples also will see, Hori Maharaj will be in depression because he cannot collect money or everything, no help, etc. Then his disciples will tell him, Swamiji, have you lost faith in the Divine Mother? So, uh, Sri Ramakrishna, he was Advaitin, but that Advaitin, Advaita was not uh, contradictory, uh, that has room, that had room for Dvaita and Vishishta Dvaita also. So, for most of us, always it is true, because we cannot, we cannot comprehend the formless, uh, impersonal Advaiti truth. That is why God sometimes comes in the assuming human form. That there is existence of Avataru in the spiritual history of humankind is only for this reason that without Avataru, most people cannot comprehend the ultimate Advaiti truth. Surely it is that impersonal Advaita is the ultimate truth that is always there. But to reach there, we, we have to go through uh, God with form. So, for most people, whenever we will conceive God with form, we have to follow the path of bhakti, that is duality. So, for most people, Sri Ramakrishna says, in this present age, in this modern age, in this iron age, in this Kali Yuga, for most people, path of devotion is suited. She again said, Gano Misra Bhakti. Bhakti, there is a danger, there is a risk that uh, bhakti uh, may turn into dogmatism. To, to choose as a safeguard to this, uh, devotion should have a mixture of, mixture of discrimination or knowledge also. This discrimination that I am worshipper of Krishna, Krishna is my chosen idol, but I have to think, I have to know this, that, that Krishna has become, has assumed various forms and names as various chosen idols of various devotees. Shami Shivanandaji, our second uh, president of the order. Suppose he is going to visit Varanasi. He would write to others, in his letters it is there. Now, Sri Ramakrishna, our Lord is calling me in the form of Vishwana. He will be going to Puri, our Lord is calling me in the form of Jagannathji. So, this is Gano Misra Bhakti, devotion, devotion to Sri Ramakrishna. But at the same time, I am aware that my Sri Ramakrishna has been other gods also, other incarnations also. So, that should be there. And what he uh, prescribed most, uh, Japu and meditation, company of the holy. and and stressed very much on love. Sri Ramakrishna used to see love among his disciples. 
one of the direct disciples. He later became uh, uh, probably Hori Maharaj. Sri Ramakrishna asked him, whom do you love? He boldly said, because he would be a uh, monk, I do not love anybody. <laughs> so, so dry hearted you are. No, not that. You have to love more. Hmm? When he uttered that, uh, which we call the gospel of this present, Shiva Gane Jive Sheva, which only uh, Shami Vivekananda could understand, that that is a new light, a new light is coming through it, Shiva Gane Jive Sheva. Then what did Shamiji say? Coming out of the room itself, Shami Vivekananda said this. So far I used to think, so far I, people used to generally think that if you resolve to follow the path of spirituality, the first thing you have to do that you have to make your heart hard, you have to be stone hearted, you have to have no feeling for the people, for the near and dear ones who is, whom you are used to love so far. Do not this, I love, but only I would think that those uh, whom I am loving are but various forms of my God on which, on whom I am going to meditate. So this is the thing, the love should be there. Holy Mother says, Thakur's family is made of love. Thakur's family is made of love. Bhalo Vashaya Tar Shangshar Gore Uthe So this love should be always there in heart. Uh, if you follow uh, the path shown by Ramakrishna, uh, Sharada Devi and Shami Vivekananda, the love should be always there. Swami Brahmananda ji used to say, Japa and meditation would be there, regular Japa and meditation. Take the name of God, Sri Ramakrishna says. If you repeat your name, gradually love for God will be developed. There is only one love to us. Love of God is love of God. Love of my near and dear ones, love of human beings is also love of God. Sri Ramakrishna says, uh, in Hinduism, you see, in the same manner you show respect to God as well as to human beings. Really it is so in Hinduism, we offer pronouns like this or touching feet. We go to, we go near the image of Mother Durga or Shiva, they are also we touch the feet. So this is there ingrained in Hinduism that God is there in human beings. So this should be there. This is a, a, a major characteristic of the way of spiritual life uh, that uh, Sri Ramakrishna, the Holy Trio spoke of or that uh, uh, emanated from the living examples of their lives. So this should be there. Shami Vivekananda says, love is Vedanta. Love is Vedanta. Vedanta means, Advaita Vedanta means, it unifies. I feel that I am one with all, and that is the truth. So Shami Vivekananda says, love is Vedanta, because love unifies. So as if Advaita Vedanta is the pinnacle, that, that Gomuk, and love is that Advaita Vedanta, in pro, the Ganga, as if it is love. So love should be there. So, and anybody will come to Sri Ramakrishna, the first thing they will feel is love. So much love that we did not feel, the director the, the, will often say, we did not feel this bond of love among our, uh, in the family also. Whoever will come to Holy Mother, they would say, uh, Shami Vishuddhananda ji and all the direct disciples, they have said that yes, we had our mother at home, we had our sisters at home, they also used to love. But when we would come to Holy Mother, as if that is, that is futile, that love, aluni, tasteless, listless, that love, they are also loving. There are instances that one uh, uh, did not bother much about uh, his or her mother, coming to Holy Mother and enjoying he, his love, her love, uh, he or she began to love, he began to learn uh, the, I mean, uh, the worth of uh, his or her biological mother. So this is the true love always, always will educate you. So that love should be there. Uh, you, we all know that Shami Vivekananda was once asked uh, that uh, you write something. You are the one who has understood Shami Vivekananda, Sri Ramakrishna most. So you are the one before, you are the one who should write the biography of uh, Sri Ramakrishna. He said, no, I, I am not competent. So vast he was uh, that uh, I won't be able to do justice to him. I, I might uh, end in making a caricature of his. So 
in one word if I have to express we will say L of E personified. Chiro Unmodha Prema Pathar in our daily hymn is also there that Sri Ramakrishna is devotion of love that is always soiling for the devotees. So, uh, I'll, I'll end quoting from Nivedita and if possible from the next section. I want to quote from Nivedita because uh, we do not know uh, very much uh, about Nivedita uh, uh, saying anything on Sri Ramakrishna. So, whatever Nivedita has said, he has mostly said on Swami Vivekananda and Holy Mother also, whatever she has written or commented on uh, Swami Vivekananda or Sri Ramakrishna and uh, Holy Mother were very significant. So, I I will quote from Nivedita about first about Sri Ramakrishna universality, then about Sri Ramakrishna's love. So, Nivedita writes about uh, Sri Ramakrishna's universality. It is true that in no other country could he have occurred. The prophet of harmony could not have occurred in any other country other than India. It is for this reason that in the uh, very structure of Hinduism, the acceptance of many Godheads are there, acceptance of many Godheads, many religious faiths are there within the Hinduism itself. So, uh, it is possible only for someone uh, imbued in the ideals of Hindu, uh, Hinduism only to accept other religions also, other non-Hindu religions also as true. That is why Nivedita says, it is true that in no other country could he have occurred, but it is not true that he represents Indian mind only, not even chiefly. We cannot say even that, that Sri Ramakrishna was chiefly Indian, no, not even that. And Sri Ramakrishna, the worshipper of Kali, represents humanity. Next section, he has a book to his credit entitled Sri Ramakrishna, no, great swan, great swan. So, there he writes also the same thing, similar things. The atmosphere that surrounds the sage of Dakshineshwar is uh, totally Indian and absolutely non European. But still, Sri Ramakrishna mysteriously provides a key which opens the hearts of all cultures and all religions. Sri Ramakrishna and next section also writes uh, uh, that uh, Sri Ramakrishna, you often called Sri Ramakrishna illiterate, but he was not almost illiterate, but he was not ignorant. Mm -hmm. Sri Ramakrishna will always do dwell on refined levels of uh, in the refined levels of sophistry, he likes this. Mm -hmm. He could remember, uh, he could remember any Sanskrit hymn, any song that would be chanted to him, chanted in presence of him only once. Even in the secular western sense, Sri Ramakrishna was a genius. Then ultimately he concludes, Sri Ramakrishna, do not take Sri Ramakrishna as a coin person from a from an ancient culture, but this book was written in the 90s of 20th century. So, he writes, do not take Sri Ramakrishna as a coin person from a distant culture, but actually he was an Einstein of the planetary civilization of 21st century and the message of the sage uh, of Dakshineshwar was love, peace and harmony. Now, what Nivedita writes about Sri Ramakrishna's love, I will uh, quote that and end. In this man's love, there was no limitation anywhere. Let one be sincere and neither race nor history nor stage of development could cut him, cut him off. His longing was for the salvation of every soul in a whole world a universe from which one most insignificant was missed could not have seemed perfect in his eyes. 
love such as this carries all heart at last only such love deserves the name god the uh, love the mother love the mother matri sneho so no, sorry god the mother so sri ram according to nivedita the love we have found in sri ram krishna is a motherly love and uh, in the famous letter she wrote to holy mother there also uh, she writes this sri ram krishna has left us but he has left behind his love in you you are sri ram krishna's own ch chalice of his love for the human kind so to holy mother we find the expression of a motherly love and that motherly love according to sri ram krishna according to nivedita is the motherly love of sri ram krishna for the human kind thank you all That means is the embodiment of Advaitic truth. Advaitic truth. As your follower of that guru, you are surely Advaiti. What she writes is correct. What I have said, <laughs> I do not remember exactly. I said probably Advaita Vadi. No. See what Holy Mother said, Sri Ramakrishna is Advaita. So, the second question is how often should we read the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna? <laughs> as often as you can. <laughs> Maybe 24 times a day if it is possible, <laughs> 2 times a day if it is possible, 2 times a week if it is possible, but every time you will read, surely you will benefit yourself. Huh? So, is there at least one, at least one is will be very good, huh? at least once will be very good, if but it is possible for you. Okay, then next question. Is there a time to read the gospel? When should the gospel be read? <laughs> any time, any time you can read. So, this is all. Thank you. Any questions from here? On the part of Sadhana, how to increase the yearly during uh, Sadhana? Yes. Is very important yes. Holy uh, Sri Ramakrishna suggested uh, several means. And the first means is the company of the holy persons. And you may say, where will you get the company of holy persons? Then there is Shraddha is there. Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna is there. Huh? If you read, we have not found any holy books in this format, in this conversational format. Christopher Isharud says about the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, the most important thing, I mean most attractive things, Christopher Isharud says about the Gospel is its nowness. As you read the Gospel, you feel that you are having the company of Sri Ramakrishna. So, if you have the company of Sri Ramakrishna or any uh, person who has realized God, automatically your yearning uh, for God will increase. Huh? And he also says, repeat the God's name, you take Diksha, Diksha is very much important. Diksha means you accept a teacher, hmm? without teacher none of us have learned anything, so, and this is something Concerns, concerns are in our world, imperceptible to most of us. So, a teacher should be there, repetition of holy name, that also Sri Ramakrishna says that that will induce uh, love of God, yearning, etc. in you. And I, I often tell this, uh, cite this example, uh, this also inspires many of us and this should inspire uh, uh, us, that Shami Brahmanandaji. He went to East Bengal, he stayed there maybe for a month or even more than that. He is leaving that day, he has reached station. At that time, a young woman comes, probably he was initiated by Radha Maharaj, that is not mentioned. And he somehow we came to know that day itself, the Radha Maharaj stayed there and leaving now. So, he rushed to station and he could fortunately 
মানে সি হলিমা আই সরি বলবো রাজা মহারাজজি অ্যান্ড অফার ইস অফার হার প্রোনাম দেন হি রিকোয়েস্টেড রাজা মা টু গিভ আর সাম ইনস্ট্রাকশন ট্রেন হ্যাজ এন্টার্ড অলরেডি আই ক্যানট সে এনিথিং বাট ওয়ান থিং আই টেল ইউ ইফ ইউ ফলো দিস ইউল ইউ উইল হ্যাভ এভরিথিং অফ ইউর স্পিরিচুয়াল লাইফ রিড গসপেল এভরি ডে গসপেল অফ শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ ইয়েস সামবডি রেজড হ্যান্ড ওভার দেয়ার ডিড ইউ নো আচ্ছা this is our attitude there is a contradiction however perhaps sri ramakrishna said that it also mithya to attain the purity before brahma satya came sri ramakrishna also said jagat is satya one is asking in the gospel sanshar ki mithya is world false mithya sri ramakrishna's answer was after knowing him the jagat is not mithya so this is that is why he says ganer pore vikram we are following the path of vikano the ultimate truth is that just now if we have realization of the brahman we will find that brahman is everything is brahman even this jagat is brahman we will find sri ramkrishna swami vivekananda sister nivedita swami vivekananda wants that is it true that shankar said one is true and the many is false and is it true that buddha said there is no true as one no truth as one only many can be a truth and then it was a relatively truth buddha dev did not talk of any truth any ultimate goal as truth but relatively the present is is manifold world is truth that buddha said so uh, nibedita asked this question to um, shami vivekananda Shami Vivekananda says, yes, what you say is correct, but to this, myself, Sri Ramakrishna and myself have added that both one and many are true, but from the, you have to view it from different angles. Mm. One is true. When you are in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, one is true. When you come down from the Nirvikalpa Samadhi, this manifold world is also true. Because Uh, as Sri Ramakrishna cites this example in gospel by uh, climbing the stairs to reach the terrace. Huh? Suppose uh, wh- when terrace is your goal, you have to leave behind, you have to discard all these steps one by one. Suppose on the seventh step you are, you discard the seventh step and ultimately reach the terrace. Then after seeing, having the view from the terrace, uh, all the things around your house, you come down and again rest on this stair number 7. Your experience before going to stair us from this 7th step and your experience after uh, reaching terrace and coming down on the, se- the same 7th step are not the same. You now know what is visible from that terrace. You now know that if I wish I again go to the terrace. So, Swami Saradhanandi also say in this, says in this, uh, in this Lila Prasangha, with the memory, they all attend Nirvikalpa Samadhi, the spiritual life actually begins after Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Swami Brahmananda says, hmm. to see God everywhere. So, that is the ultimate sense. Now, your question, pertinent question would be this, that is regarding those who have attained the Nirvikalpa Samadhi, but I have not I have not attended in Vikalpa Samadhi. Yes, I am not also attended in Vikalpa Samadhi. Uh, so, what to do? Why should we take the whole world as true? Then, in our support, there is a saying in the Bhasha, in Shankara Bhasha of the second chapter on Sthita Prakra Lakshana. Sthita Prakra, you know, there is a straight question is asked, very practical question. What is the external characteristics? How a layman will understand that this person is a Srita Prabhu, established in the knowledge of Brahman, established in the steady knowledge of Brahman. How, do you, how does he talk? How does he move about? How does he stay in a place? There, the Varsha, Srita Prabhu is 
দুঃখেশু অনুদ্বিঘ্ন মন সুখেশু বিগতস্পেও এসে ট্রেসে এসে এসে রে দেয় দে আর শঙ্করাচার্য দিজ রাইট ওয়ান সিঙ্গল পিথি এক্সপ্রেশন ভেরি ওয়ান্ডারফুল অ্যান্ড দ্যাট উই অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফলো দ্যাট ইজ আওয়ার সাধনা কৃতার্থ লক্ষণানি আনি তানি সাধনা কৃতার্থ লক্ষণানি আনি তানি সাধনা কৃতার্থ লক্ষণ কৃতার্থ মান হি হু হ্যাজ অ্যাটিন দি গোল ন্যাচারাল ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিক্স অফ এ কৃতার্থ এ রিয়ালাইজ সোল ন্যাচারাল ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিক্স অফ এ স্থিত প্রজ্ঞ ইজ দিস হিজ আনপার্ট আনপার্ট আউট ইন দি অপোজিট এক্সট্রিম কন্ডিশন হিজ নাইদার ইলেটেড উইথ প্রেজ অর প্লেজার নাইদার ডিপ্রেসড ইন সরো অর আই মিন ডিফেম এটসেট্রা সো হিজ আনপার্ট আউট ইন সো দ্যাট আই ক্যানট ডু that i cannot that is his natural condition that is that is very difficult for me but my sadhana will be there when there will be i mean these things that the sadhu will come i look at his thing that is his natural con- uh, condition i will try to impress upon me that i also will remain unparted very difficult but that is sadhana so our sadhana is this Shivagyane jive shava, what is worship, why do we do, we practice this, that the God is God, this world is also God, God is God, this world is also God. Suppose somebody comes to us, Shivagyane jive shava, so I will forget, oh he is not Shiva, he is Mr. such and such, I help him, again I will remind myself, no, no, he is not Mr. such and such, I am giving him, he is happy, that means Sri Ramakrishna is happy. This way continuously, forget that is meditation. While meditation also we do the same thing. I want to see Sri Ramakrishna here, I am unmoved. But Sri Ramakrishna is image passes away. Again we draw, again I draw, repeatedly. Similarly, repeatedly I remind myself that you are God, you are God, you are God. Why do I do? Because Vigano, the realized soul has said every being is Brahman. Swami Brahmananda said, Swami Shivananda has said, Swami other such as Thakur has said. So for me it is sadhana, it is not natural, but it is sadhana. Our Shiva Gana Jivashava or Kiswashi or a sadhana of seeing God everywhere. I think it is over a time. Okay, Namaskar, thank you. is a wonderful discourse and in a very short uh, the time that he could give the wonderful the way the Sri Ramakrishna's ideology. The first is L-O-V-E, the unique thing. A, we can hate, we can close our eyes, we can eat, say that we don't, we are not responsible. But when you think, that, no, these people are there, I have to go and serve them. That is a wonderful thing. Swamiji said, so many lives you have lived. What? Suppose you don't get realize God in this one life. Sacrifice it for others. But you will truly realize God. The friends, this is really, really unique. And as all the time we are thinking and that Shankara, Vashya, Shankara, this thing, they always think that Jagat Mitta, Jagat is nothing there. But when you are hungry, what will happen? Food is waiting, of course. <laughs> that time, Jagat is Satya. <laughs> I was reminded of that. <laughs> so, as long as the physical consciousness, body, sense is there, Jagat is also Satya. And in the Vriyadarana Upanishad, they use wonderful terms. Satya, Satya Satya Satya. That is also there. Satya, this is Satya. Satya means existence. But Satya sa Satya, above that, that Brahman. So, shall we sing this song? Yes, or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Okay then, okay, okay then. Next, uh, let's see that. 
जय राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण भलो आमर मन जय जुग अवतार जिनी पूर्ण ब्रह्म नारायण जुग राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण पालो आमर मन जीव दुख ते कत जीव धरी नर कले बार बारंग बार अवतार जगत ईश्वर बारंग ये बार माधुर जगन ए मुरति जीत कामिनी कंचन ये बार माधुर जीत कामिनी कंचन राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण बलो आमर मन जय पूर्व पूर्व अवतार एलो कलंग से जहां पूर्व पूर्व स्वयं से दक्षिणेश्वरे हेसे चे बार स्वयं ओरे चक्षु मेले चे देख पाबीरे न भो जीवन चक्षु राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण बल अमर मन जय राम कृष्ण रो कृपा राम विवेकानंद विलाय भक्ति मुक्ति बिना मूल्य के निबीर आए भक्ति मुक्ति राम कृष्ण बोले नाव रे तुले जर जो तो है प्रयोजन राम कृष्ण बोले धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष जर जो तो है प्रयोजन धर्म राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण बलो अमर मन जय राम कृष्ण जय राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण बलो अमर मन राम कृष्ण थैंक यू डियर डेबोटीज थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज अ वर्किंग डे but still so many people and you know why i am making little late because they are preparing food <laughs> truly how you were expecting 40 to 50 people max and now it is 76 almost 80 so the the those of our devotees they are preparing and uh, the, this is really unique and really really appreciable because for god only you are coming you like to listen about god you like to talk about god and that is really unique satya yuga is coming that swami vivekananda said ha uh, satya yuga and because of the bhagwan sri ramakrishna satya yuga started and we are ushering we are in the beginning the fast we are going so that we should be proud of maybe we will be little late in night maybe a little difficulty but we are always with that thank you again and let us say shant jai bhagwan sri ram krishna jai ma sarada jai shami vivekananda and then three times shanti jai bhagwan sri ram krishna dev ki jai maha mai ki जय श्यामी जी महाराज जी की ओ शांति श
शांति शांति हरि हियो तत्सम कृष्णापनमस्तु So we sh- three swamis will stand over here please come and just bow and then kindly go to the dining hall otherwise it will be too late